tend to paint life with a limited palette of black and white. Governments are good or evil, leaders wrong or right. In my fight against apartheid, I saw much that would make one think in those terms. But missions like ours to the North Atlantic, where we face evil, certainly in a man like Jandra, prove to me most things are not so simple. Is it justified to take even a single innocent life to prevent a greater evil? During my mission to Chechnya, I had similarly difficult questions to answer. The mission seemed straightforward enough. We had not been able to contact Yuri Gregorov, the SVR head, for some days and the crisis in Moscow was growing. We uncovered allegations the Russian military was practicing ethnic cleansing in Chechnya. I was sent to Ivankov's home village of Samashki to investigate. There were many types of non-lethal force at my disposal. My air gun, of course, the taser, and grenades which carried a powerful anesthetic gas. A target would wake up with a terrible headache, but they would be alive. There seemed to be several patrols of Russian soldiers in the area, so that much was true. The Russians were involved. But my goal was to gather evidence, not fight a war. If I had to, I would use non-lethal force to prevent my capture or discovery. I would not kill them, no matter what they had done. More disconcerting was my discovery of a recent mass grave. The village may have been destroyed accidentally, but the people who lived there, surely most of them would have survived. I would also have to photograph these grave sites. I hope there would be no more. Schools were meant to be places of learning, where the young and curious could expand their knowledge. What lessons had been taught in this place? How many curious minds had been silenced? There was an SVR chopper in the middle of the road, ready for departure. Logan's hunch proved correct. Yuri Gregorov was here in Chechnya. The man doing the interrogation was none other than Yuri Gregorov. The agency had made many dealings with Gregorov over the years. Logan would be most disappointed to learn that Gregorov was directly involved in something like this. This, then, was a difficult choice. The Russians, pressured by the threat of a biological attack that would kill millions of Moscovites, responded with desperate measures. The Chechnyans, pressured by years of oppression and murder, also responded with desperation. I felt in no position to judge them, but I would not stand by and let them kill this man. I would photograph Yuri in the act. He would not be able to deny his involvement. One good photograph would be sufficient. I did not look forward to presenting this evidence to Logan. I would have to time the rescue carefully. As soon as Gregorov left, I would only have a minute before others would come. I could not use gas because it would knock out the hostage as well, and there would be no time to carry him to safety. was my chance. I would not stop Gregorov from leaving, though I wished I could. He could not learn of my presence 
or it would harm our ability to deal with him later. I was beginning to understand. The SVR was here to find Avengov. Their desperation was apparent. They would destroy Avengov's home, torture his followers, and murder them one by one until they told them what they had come to discover. The secret location of Avengov's military stronghold. Standing beside the second mass grave, I knew that indeed I was witnessing some kind of ethnic attack. I was helpless to do more than record the evidence. as well. My anger began to grow as I thought of the human callousness necessary to destroy a place of healing. sites of freshly dug earth were in fact mass graves. I discovered one which had not yet been filled in. This meant that perhaps the operation was still in progress. been utterly destroyed. Only a portion of a steeple allowed me to guess at the structure's purpose. I despaired of finding any Chechnyans alive. I stumbled across a makeshift holding cell. It was apparent that the Russians were holding prisoners here, awaiting execution. I would do my best to free them. When I opened the door, they shook in terror at the sight of yet another gunman. It took very little coaxing to get them to run for their lives. I could not blame them for their fear. Thank you, my friend. A 
don't know who you are, but they dead kill. Move quickly and silently. They must not know I'm here. Thank you again. Spasiba. You finished the mission in record time. Awesome work. Cobra managed to not get killed. Cobra's earned a new rating. So you see the problem I faced. Not act, and the CDP hostage would have been killed. Act. Free him. And he rejoins the organization we are working to stop. The larger question presents its own difficulties. On the one hand, the Russians are justified in protecting themselves from terrorism. Yet the Chechnyans too are justified in their search for justice and freedom. Who is right? Who is wrong? As an observer, I gathered evidence for others to decide and erred on the side of protecting life. What would you have done differently?